What is spatial mapping in augmented reality? All right, Lars, what are you going to teach us today? I thought I'll give you a little bit of an insight into what makes HoloLens HoloLens. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little thing called, well, little thing is not really that small, but it's insignificant when you develop, but it has a huge, huge impact on what you're actually developing. It's called spatial mapping. Spatial mapping is the defining feature of the HoloLens that is kind of taken care of for you. So I thought I'll give you an example of what it is so that you know, if anyone wanted to start developing for HoloLens, they kind of have an idea of how things relate to what they're doing. So, uh, spatial mapping is the way that this device, which is the HoloLens, uh, has four environmental cameras on the front that maps the room. So it uses infrared light, and it figures out exactly where everything is in the room. Right. So I'll give you an example in a second. Uh, so on the screen here, I mean, I can show you if you want, but I have uh, just a little graphics of the main things that HoloLens uh, spatial mapping allows you to do. The first thing is placement, so you can actually place things. So because the HoloLens knows that there's a chair or a couch or a whiteboard or whatever it is, you can place things on it. Right? So you can set a vase, a digital vase on your physical table. Um, you can you know, put a picture on the wall or put your Netflix screen on the, on the other wall, whatever it might be. So that's placement. There's occlusion, which is a very fancy way of saying it hides things. <laughs> so you can have things running behind your chairs and your couches and all that. You know? So it, it builds a full 3D model. There's a good game called Conquer, not that it necessarily is a gaming device, but Conquer is a little squirrel and you'll actually run behind your furniture and jump on it and everything. So the occlusion part of it is important, as is physics, because you want to have a physics component so things appear real. The whole idea with the HoloLens is to enhance your physical reality. Yeah, mixed reality. Right? Yeah, mixed reality, that's right. We're not replacing it, we're not necessarily augmenting it, but we're also mixing it as in they know about each other. And the last thing is navigation. So, like Conquer, you can run around things and between, you know, leg chairs and underneath tables and everything. So that's kind of what it is needed to do. So let me show you how it works. So I want be easier if you guys can see my screen. So in this is the developer portal for the Hololens, and it's now connected. Hopefully it's still on. Just turn it on. No, yes, I'm going to look like an idiot, but that's okay. <laughs> Looks good on you. I know. I'm, I wear it well. Yes, it's, it's like joining the forge. You know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I can now see things you can't. Um, what the device is doing now is showing me a start menu. Actually, I can show you. How about that? So I'll show you on the screen what I'm actually seeing. So here's a live preview. Right. There we go. So see there's a start menu that's kind of following me around. Now I'm giving away the magic because now you can all see what's behind in front of me. So I can click on things, say, you know, click on the holograms. And I can place the things, see, I'll put it on the wall there, because it knows in a second, it knows there's a wall there, there we go. Whoops, put that, let's see, there, that looks good. And then you can start placing things around the room. Uh, whoops, there we go. Okay, so here we got certain things. I'm pretty sure Spencer likes spacecrafts. So there you go, you got the spacecraft, there you go. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Right, so you get the idea. Now, as I'm doing this, it's actually mapping the room. And I mean, there's a few walls around us here. I can tap and it'll kind of force the mapping of the room. You can see the squares and triangles everywhere, right? And it's mapping the room for us. That's the spatial mapping. And it looks like this. So if I go to the 3D view, you can see this is following my head in real time. That little, you know, dot there. I can zoom in on it. And I can uh, see from above. And then the really cool thing is you click update and it draws the room in. Oh, wow. All right? So it's a full 3D model. Look at that. You can actually see where you're sitting as well. So you can obviously, the more time you spend on it, the better the model, model will be and all that sort of stuff. Um, what you can do with the spatial mapping is uh, create a world that is not, not, nothing else. Right? This, this is very exciting to me. Oh yeah, it goes to me as well. <laughs> because you know, having that 3D model, so in this case it's 8,400 triangles just like that. Like I just mapped it. Right? I mapped my... Uh, my living room at home is kind of combined kitchen, living area, living room type thing. And it was like half a million triangles. Like it's quite accurate. It's not down to finer detail, but it's so accurate that you can have conquer jump on your chairs and on your, on your furniture. Very really cool. That's amazing. So now, how early did you get into this? I've been doing this for a year and a half now or something. 
as, as soon as I can get my hands on it, because yeah. it was announced and a long wait before anything could sort of be touched for it. So about 18 months. Ago. And this is really an important, the spatial mapping part is like a critical part of augmented reality because yeah. uh, you have VR devices all over the place, but it seems like, am I wrong in saying, is Microsoft the only one who has like a product right now out there or are there other ones that just don't fit the bill? Tell me about what else is available that mm -hmm. uses spatial mapping um, or is there anything? There is. Uh, it's actually an interesting question because right now there's HoloLens is the main thing. Uh, there's another product from an American company that I can't remember. It's three uh, letters like O R C or something like that, and they have some goggles. They have actually two pairs that are quite reasonably priced, like seven hundred bucks and a thousand dollars or something, compared to three grand for that. Uh, it's not as convincing as the Hololens, but it's a step in the right direction, of making things smaller. Is it tethered? Uh, that is not tethered either, as far as I know. Uh, and then, in about oh, you know, sometime maybe late 2017, we'll get uh, devices from Lenovo, HP, Dell, That's right, I heard Acer, that. all those. But they're not. Google was working with some of them. Yeah, as well, right? I think. But it's on Tango. The Tango is different. Tango is a hardware element to Android devices, okay. and it comes with a Tango development kit for doing AR. Um, Apple also has AR Kit, which has been announced, which is very exciting because yes. allegedly it's going to work on existing devices. So they will have like 200, 300, 400 million devices out of the box. So I'm pretty excited about that because that's going to push everything to be much better, right? Wow. Um, and then there's these other devices are called, um, they are mixed reality um, because it's Windows 10 mixed reality is kind of the, the name for it. And, uh, but they have what's called inside out tracking. So it maps the room, but it's a virtual reality experience with the room mapped inside of it. Does that make sense? Yes. I haven't tried that yet, but it's, I'm kind of intrigued to see what that could do, because I'm not quite sure how that works. Something I've always wanted to know is that can you do spatial mapping on the go, and how fast can you go? So if I decide to go outside, mm -hmm. I have horses on the on mm -hmm. range. Can I run alongside my horse or, or ride him? wearing this and how fast can it map the trees that I'm passing? How fast can it see things as we're going? So the short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it, it's, not, it's not live live. Mm -hmm. It probably does it every, I would guess maybe 10 seconds. I would always say to people, you know, estimate 20, 30 seconds between new mappings. Um, so you can get these sort of ghosts of people walking past, they get mapped as they walk past and then they're gone, but they still are part of the model for a little bit. Um, and it's not really used outside, to be honest, <laughs> unfortunately. The UV light from the sun just messes up the UV mapping of the Um Juicy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they'll fix that. Some sort of technology will come that will let, let that happen. But really, do you want to look like this outside? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, it may not be as kosher as other sunglasses you might wear. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Lars, thank you so much for taking the time to explain that to us. No problem. It was very, very cool. Thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.